Okay. Yeah. Good morning, everybody. Roberta Silvera here. Um, welcome and um, continue at your own risk. Ha -ha. Um, let's get started with the prayers and um, Connor will tell you how that's going to go. Good morning, everybody. We'll start with a seven line prayer to Guru Rinpoche, uh, reciting it three times. And the praise to Shakyamuni Buddha, teacher, O destroyer, thus gone, fully and perfectly awakened Buddha, endowed with knowledge of good conduct, gone to bliss, knower of the world, helms when of ordinary beings to be tamed, supreme one, teacher of all gods and men, Buddha, O destroyer, glorious victorious one, Shakyamuni, to you I pay homage, make offerings, and go for refuge. Teacher, O destroyer, thus gone, Fully and perfectly awakened Buddha, endowed with knowledge and good conduct, gone to bliss, know of the world, helmsman of ordinary beings to be tamed, supreme one, teacher of all gods and men, Buddha, foe destroyer, glorious victorious one, Shakyamuni, to you I pay homage, make offerings, and go for refuge. Teacher, foe destroyer, thus gone, fully and perfectly awakened Buddha, endowed with knowledge and good conduct, Gone to bliss, knower of the world, helmsman of ordinary beings to be tamed, supreme one, teacher of all gods and men, Buddha, foe destroyer, glorious victorious one, Shakyamuni, to you I pay homage, make offerings, and go for refuge. When you, chief of humans, were born, you took seven steps on this great earth, and you said, I am supreme in this world. Do you who are wise at that time, I prostrate. Completely pure body, supreme and refined form, ocean of wisdom like a golden mountain, fame that blazes in the three worlds, supreme protector, to you I prostrate. Endowed with the supreme marks, a face like the stainless moon, a color like gold, to you I pay homage. 
The three worlds are not like you who is free from dust. Master's one, endowed with knowledge, to you I prostrate. Protector, endowed with great compassion, omniscient teacher, feel devotion-like merits and good qualities. To the dust God I prostrate. Through purity, free from attachment, through virtue, releases from the evil God realms. Unique, supreme, ultimate meaning. To the Dharma that brings peace, I prostrate. From freedom, teaching the path, while abiding in the pure trainings. Holy field, endowed with good qualities. To the Sangha also, I prostrate. Homage to the Supreme Buddha. Homage to the Dharma Refuge. Homage to the Great Sangha. To all three, ever devout homage. To all worthy of respect, bowing with bodies as many as all realms, atoms, and all aspects. With supreme faith, I pay homage. Do not commit any non-virtuous action. Accumulate virtue and goodness. Subdue your own mind. This is the teaching of the Buddha. Like a star, a mirage, a lamp, illusions, drops of dew, bubbles, dreams, lightning and clouds. Look at all conditioned phenomena as such. Do you do this merit? having attained the state of the all-seeing and thereby subduing the enemy of faults, may I liberate migrators from the ocean of existence, stirred by the ways of aging, sickness, and death. I take refuge in the Guru. I take refuge in the Buddha. I take refuge in the Dharma. I take refuge in the Sangha. I take refuge in the Guru. I take refuge in the Buddha. I take refuge in the Dharma. I take refuge in the Sangha. I take refuge in the Guru, I take refuge in the Buddha, I take refuge in the Dharma, I take refuge in the Sangha. I take refuge until I am enlightened in the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha. By the positive potential I create by listening to the Dharma, may I attain Buddhahood in order to benefit all sentient beings. May all sentient beings have happiness and the causes of happiness. May all sentient beings be free of suffering and the causes of suffering. May all sentient beings be inseparable from the joyful happiness that is free from suffering. May all sentient beings abide in equanimity, free from holding some close and others distant. Respectfully, I prostrate with my body, speech, and mind. I present clouds of every type of offering, actual and imagined. I confess all my negative actions accumulated since beginning this time and rejoice in the virtuous actions of all ordinary and noble beings. Please, Buddha, remain as our guide and turn the wheel of Dharma until samsara ends. Through the merit created by myself and others, may the two bodhicittas ripen and may I attain Buddhahood for the sake of all sentient beings. This offering I make of a precious jeweled mandala together with other pure offerings and wealth and the virtues we have collected throughout the three times with our body, speech, and mind. All my masters and my items and the three precious jewels, I offer all to you with unwavering faith. Accepting these out of your boundless compassion, please send forth waves of your blessings. Yidam Guru Rana Mandala Kam Nayatiyami. And the Heart Sutra. I prostrate the Arya Triple Gem. Thus did I hear at one time. The Bhagavan was dwelling on massive vultures mountain on Rajagriya, together with a great community of monks and a great community of bodhisattvas. At that time, the Bhagavan was absorbed in the concentration on the categories of phenomena called profound perception. Also at that time, the Bodhisattva, Mahasattva, Arya, Avalokiteshvara, looked upon the very practice of the profound perfection of wisdom and beheld those five aggregates also as empty of inherent nature. Then, through the power of Buddha, the Venerable Shariputra said this to the Bodhisattva, Mahasattva, Arya, Avalokiteshvara, How should any son of the lineage train who wishes to practice the activity of the profound perfection of wisdom? He said that, and the Bodhisattva, Mahasattva, Arya, Avalokiteshvara said this to the Venerable Shariputra, Shariputra, any son of the lineage or daughter of the lineage who wishes to practice the activity of the profound perfection of wisdom should look upon it like this, correctly and repeatedly beholding those five aggregates also as empty of inherent nature. Form is empty, emptiness is form. Emptiness is not other than form, and form is also not other than emptiness. 
In the same way, feeling, discrimination, compositional factors, and consciousness are empty. Shariputra, likewise, all phenomena are emptiness, without characteristic, unproduced, unceased, stainless, not without stain, not deficient, not fulfilled. Shariputra, therefore, in emptiness there is no form, no feeling, no discrimination, no compositional factors, no consciousness, no eye, no ear, no nose, no tongue, no body, no mind, no visual form, no sound, no odor, no taste, no object of touch and no phenomenon. There is no eye element and so on and up to and including no mind element and no mental consciousness element. There is no ignorance, no extinction of ignorance and so on and up to and including no aging and death and no extinction of aging and death. Similarly, there is no suffering, origination, cessation and path. There is no exalted wisdom, no attainment, and also no non-attainment. Shariputra, therefore, because there is no attainment, bodhisattvas rely on and dwell in the perfection of wisdom, the mind without obscuration and without fear. Having completely passed beyond error, they reach the end point of nirvana. All the Buddhas who dwell in the three times also manifestly completely awaken to unsurpassable, perfect, complete enlightenment reliance on the perfection of wisdom. Therefore, the mantra of the perfection of wisdom, the mantra of great knowledge, the mantra, the unsurpassed mantra, the mantra that is equal to the unequaled, the mantra that thoroughly pacifies all suffering should be known as the truth since it is not false. The mantra of the perfection of wisdom is declared tayata, gata gata, paragata, parasamgata, bodhisoha. Shariputta, the Bodhisattva and Mahasattva should train in the profound perfection of wisdom like that. Then the Bhagavan arose from that concentration and commended the Bodhisattva, Mahasattva, Arya, Avalokiteshvara, saying, Well said, well said, son of the lineage, it is like that, it is like that. One should practice the profound perfection of wisdom just as you have indicated. Even the Tathagatas rejoice. The Bhagavan having thus spoken, the Venerable Sharivadi Putra, the Bodhisattva, Mahasattva, Arya Avalokiteshvara, those surrounding in their entirety, along with the world of gods, humans, Asuras, and Gandharvas, were overjoyed and highly praised that spoken by the Bhagavan. Okay, I guess I'm on. Good morning, everybody. Um, my name is Roberta Silvera, and I'm a student of Lama Jen Yeshi Jimpa, and uh, I'd like to talk to you today with a, about a topic that's uh, near and dear to my heart. Uh, the name of my talk is Dharma, Doubt, and the Pursuit of Happiness. Um, so um, in holding to Buddhist tradition, um, I'm going to I uh, would like to begin by paying homage to the teacher, Lama Jimpa, and the origin of this teaching. I'd like to thank Lama Yeshe Jimpa for his unwavering support in guiding me to have the courage to give this talk since uh, public speaking is not my strong suit. Um, it's based on oral teachings from Lama Jimpa about the Four Noble Truths, Six Paramitas, the Vajrayana Path, and Two Yogis' Lives from the book, The 84 Siddhas by Abhyadatta, translated by James B. Robinson. And I'm grateful for all of you tuning in today and hope this conversation is a benefit to you and your journey in some very small way. And finally, um, any mistakes I make today are all my own. 
So I'm going to begin by reading two brief Mahasiddhi biographies and then tell you a little bit uh, about my own personal um, Buddhist journey. And after that, I'd like to discuss the connections to all of them and then open up for any questions or discussions. Maybe best to hold those till the end. So please let me know if you have any difficulty with um, the sound or any sort of technical thing. And I will definitely not fix that for you, but Connor just might. Um, okay, so I'd like to read you uh, the biography of Inyapa, uh, which means the man who plays the vinya, and Yogipa, who was one of the Kandala caste, and that's uh, one of the untouchable caste, uh, one who dealt with the dead. I won't speak specifically of their gurus, Buddhapa and Sarvipa, nor of the Havajra Tantras. Those are topics for some other better person. Um, their lives kind of struck a chord with me as the first one is about the sound and playing of music, which I can definitely relate to because I play the cello. And the second, definitely because he had such a difficult time getting it, meditation and the uh, Buddhist instructions. So let me read those for you now. Vinyapa, whose name means the man who plays the vinya, came from the country of Gahuri and was born of royal family. His guru was Budapa, and he obtained his, city, uh, his cities from Havajra. Vinyapa was the only son of the king of Gahuri, and his parents and the people were very fond of him. He was brought up by eight nurses, but he preferred always to sit in the company of music masters. When the prince played the vinya, he became totally involved with the sound of the music and cognizance of other things of the world simply did not enter his mind. His father and mother, the assembly of ministers and people discussed the matter. The prince is the heir apparent to the throne and yet he is not interested in the affairs of the kingdom. He is interested only in the vinya. What should be done? While this discussion took place, a well-experienced yogin, Budapa, came before the prince. The prince took faith in him. Circumambulating and giving reverence to the yoga, and he spoke sincerely with him. The yoga remained in the company of the prince for only a little while before the, he saw the time had come to train him. He then said to the prince, Oh, prince, wouldn't you not like to practice the Dharma? And the prince replied, Oh, yoga, I cannot give up my instrument. If, there's, if there exists a method of accomplishing the Dharma without giving up the vinya, I will practice it. The yoga, upon being asked, then gave him the initiation which ripens the unripened causes and the following instructions for meditation. Give up distinguishing the sound of the vinya from the hearing of it. Meditate so as to make the two, the experience of the sound and the idea of it into one. The prince meditated in that way for nine years and purified the stains of the mind. Having produced the inner experience, which is like purging, which is like the pure light of a lamp, he obtained the Mahamudra generated in himself many auspicious abilities, such as clear understanding and others. Becoming known in all directions as the Yogan Vinyapa, he taught countless doctrines to the assembled citizens in the city of Gahuri. Finally, having narrated his experiences, he went in, in that very body to the realm of the Dakas. So that was Vinyapa. Yogipa, who lived in Onda... Adantapuri was of the Kandala caste, and his guru was Sav Savaripa. Yet though Yogipa made great effort, it led to little wisdom. One day, the guru, Savaripa, came to him and initiated him in the Havajra. After giving him instructions for the developing stage and the perfecting stage, he set him to meditating. But Yogipa was still not able to understand the meaning of the instructions. He said to the guru, I cannot meditate effectively and made a request to perform meritorious acts by just body and speech. So the guru taught him the recitation of Vajra Haruka and told him to consummate his practice by going to the 24 great places. Yogipa practiced accordingly, and in 12 years he purified the stains and obtained the city of Mahamudra. He told of his understanding, and for five years he aided the various purposes of living beings. Then, in that very body, he went to the realm of the Dakas. Okay, so now a little bit about me. Um, so my Buddhist journey began back in about 2003. 
um, like many of us, the trigger was a dis was a dispass dissatisfaction of the life I was living, and the ever present thought there must be more life than this. At the time, I was a single mom living in Boise, Idaho, and found myself trying to scramble for a job after graduate school, as the one I anticipated fell through. And that was actually a good thing in the end. While waiting to take my nurse practitioner boards, um, I was trying to find a job, and I was too qualified for most of them, and nobody really wanted to hire somebody for a month or two. So the question became, how would I feed my three hungry boys? And it was kind of a scramble. Well, luckily it all worked out, but I found myself repeatedly asking that very same question. Shouldn't there be more to life than this? So serendipity or karma, it seems, led me to a flyer about a talk Venerable Chubtan Chodron was giving. And so my journey began. The one thing I remember her saying, and to this day really is a sentinel thing for me, uh, was don't believe me, check up on it for yourself and see if it is so. That hooked me, and it was definitely not like the Catholic religion I was born into. I attended teachings as I was able, began to understand more and more about Buddhism, and did try out the tenets of these teachings, vulnerable truths, karma, rebirth. A lot of it did make sense, but a lot of it was in the making. And in 2005, before I moved to New Hampshire, I took precepts with Venerable Chodron for the first time. My um, given name was Tupsin Sepal, which means magnificent life in the Dharma. Um, and I've taken refuge with her actually three times. I thought there would be more opportunity when I went to the East, as there were a lot more Dharma centers. But really, life happened. I had kids, and there you have it. I did make many great connections at Milarepa Center in Vermont, Karukula Center in Massachusetts, and the Shambhala Center of White River Junction, Vermont. I heard many great teachings from lamas, had teachings from the Dalai Lama, and practiced as best I could, which in hindsight was really quite sporadic. And I eventually moved to, on to Colorado, where I became mostly kidless at that point, and wanted to try to practice and have a more organized, formal learning uh, approach to the Buddhist path. So I connected with the first place I found uh, with Buddhist classes. And it ended up being a big mistake and a big, a good big lesson. It was called the Kadampa Meditation Center and the founder was Geshe Kelsen Gyatso, who I later found out through the kindness of my teacher, Venerable Children, who I still keep in contact with throughout all these years, that he did not really make the cut uh, in the Evaluate Your Teacher Manual. So of course, in hindsight, the signals were there, but I just didn't pay enough attention to them at the time. So I found a new center there, which really resonated with me, actually. The founding lama was Kenshin Thrango Rinpoche, and his book is actually the Mahamudra book that we study. In many ways, I feel like I am truly more connected with the Kagyu tradition than with the Galupas. I'm not sure why that is, and I don't know if karma is related. I really don't know, but my heartfelt connections with Rinpoche, Kempo Lobsan Tenzin, Kempo Jigme, and Clark Johnson made me, my time there some of the best Dharma time I can actually remember. So my long-winded tale here brings me to some of the points I want to make. I have been so extremely fortunate to be exposed to and have wonderful, even famous, true Dharma teachers such as Venerable Chodron and Kenshin Tenga Rinpoche and all of the others. Over the many years, I received lots and lots of teachings, practiced to the best of the ability, ability of that time and learn many lessons. Not only did I learn about the Buddhist path, I learned that it's good to hear the same teachings over and over and over because every time it's different and each time we're different and new understandings arise. I was exposed to many different schools of Buddhism and understood where my heartfelt connections lie. I learned the importance of taking the time to really investigate your teacher. More recently, I learned you can't just cherry pick your Buddhist learning experience and practice and call yourself a Buddhist. You really do need to understand and believe in the four seals. And in case you don't remember, all compounded things are impermanent. All contaminated, contaminated things are selfless, suffering. All phenomena are empty and selfless. And nirvana is true peace. Most recently in reflection, I understand 
these years were really just the primer to my Buddhist education. And most importantly, I think uh, I realized the role of diligence or right effort um, is played in all of this. I have definitely had ups and downs in practice, but still remain diligent to following the Buddhist path and my teachers. And then I moved to Sacramento and tried out Lion's Roar. Somehow it seemed to be a combination of Galukpa and Kagyu, to tell you the truth. And when I first heard Lama Jimpa teach, I thought, who is this guy? I've not heard an approach like this, um, but all I could come up with while I was wrestling with um, somewhat, some of his more non-traditional style uh, compared to my other formal teachers was, all the things that he says, these are all the same teachings. These are the true teachings that I know from before. So I was interested, intrigued, and somehow connected to this different kind of style. I've never had regular darshans before, and to tell you the truth, I didn't even really know what the word meant. I had to ask Patty. Um, I was beginning to understand the importance in moving forward on the path through the kindness and guidance and regular proximity to the guru and my teacher, Lamala. Um, my other teachers were there, and I continued to be in contact with them in various ways. Um, and, and still do, which has kept the path except accessible to me all along the way. But having famous teachers who are all over the world is really not the same as having one smack dab in front of you with access. It really, I mean, a phone call, a text, a, you name it, right there. I've taken refuge with Lama Jimpa, uh, and my Buddhist name with him is Yeshi Sogni. And so it seems appropriate that it's time to unite the two roads of practice and wisdom with his help associated with this name. It feels like I may now be moving from this Buddhist primer to Buddhist first grade after all this time. The past year has presented many, many, many obstacles for me in my practice on the path and many, many, many doubts about my abilities. These are definitely not COVID related, maybe perhaps a little COVID enabled, but Lama's kindness and compassion toward me throughout all of this has really helped me to see that even all the doubts are okay and in fact are really necessary. But with some compassion for myself and diligent effort, I can be free just like all of you. So how does all of this jagged Dharma journey connect with the two Mahasiddhi bios that I already read? In a couple of ways, I think. Uh, first and foremost, uh, I, I could really identify with them. And I think that's important for any of us who are on this path. We have to be able to have some connection to it. I love music and the sound of a resonant cello playing a beautiful note. There's really nothing like it in my view. So I really could understand the first Vinyapa stance and Yogipa even more so because I really feel like him. I mean, it's like chewing on rocks getting through all this Dharma. And ultimately, they're both like me. They're just regular Joes, but they give me the inspiration that if they can do it, I can do it too. And that's where we all start and conventionally finish. But with confidence, faith, and most importantly, diligence, we are free to experience the truth. Both of these stories are about the Havajra Tantra, which I believe is about the completion stage of Vajrayana. It's kind of interesting that. I was attracted to both of these guys, and they were involved with the same Tantra. Um, I don't really know anything about the Havajra Tantra, so I'm not going to say anything more about it. Um, I did read that the 24 holy places Yogipa had to pilgrimage to are symbols of our own Vajra bodies. Um, and they are uh, symbolic of the 24 hours in each of our own days with which we can practice our own Buddhist pilgrimage. This is what Lama told me, and it really made sense when he said it. But even more, these yogis met a guru and developed confidence and faith in what was taught and were diligent in their efforts to reach the truth. One for nine years, one for 12 years, which, wow. I think that was probably after they knew a lot more about Dharma than I do now. Confidence, faith, and diligence in the guru and Dharma will keep us on the path. They are our objective methods that lead to the truth. But doubts will always, always, always come along our paths. And the only way to overcome those actually is to verify and experience the truths ourselves. No one can do it for us. 
We need both the objective logic of training and practice and subjective experience to realize truth and be free. Lama said, when we have experiences which become insight and then become realizations, and we broaden those in our world, we are living the truth. And that really resonated with me and I really liked it. I hope all of these doubts I've had in this past year are at a tipping point so that with even more diligence on my part, they will soon be overcome. It's like the story of the three pots. I'm sure you've all heard the one that was overturned so nothing can get in and one was full of poison so nothing could get in and then there was a crack pot where everything was leaking out and I'm kind of like that when I need to be fixed up here. So I think uh, with that, I'll just leave you with the Buddha's last words. I exhort, I exhort you, all compounded things are subject to vanish. Strive with earnestness and diligence. And that is what we all need to do, inching along every day in our lives, like, like the tortoise, not like the hare. And I think that's it. So if you have any questions, comments, want to talk about anything, sing a Christmas carol, let's have at it. Okay, I've got a question. What okay. is diligence? What 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 is that? What does that mean in practice? Keep on trucking in my view. It doesn't matter even though, you know, you're you have some obstacle, you're not sitting, another obstacle, your speech, whatever it is that's, you know, an obstacle along this path, you just keep picking yourself up and walking down that road. And I think it's mentioned in all, I think it's mentioned in all the things, um, the Four Noble Truths, the Paramitas, all of those. Talk about diligence, right effort. What inspires you? Sorry? What inspires you on your path? Mm, people that I uh, interact with every day. Um, obviously, Lama is a great inspiration, all of you. Um, I think partly because those are concrete, and I'm kind of a concrete kind of person in a lot of ways, and so um, I can really identify with other people's situations. I mean, it's part of um, my work as a professional. So I would say that's the first thing that comes to my mind. Obviously, there's everybody has lots of different inspirations. How about for you? Uh, I just have this strange cheerleader that stands behind me screaming, go, 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 go. <laughs> And that's about it. It's like this screaming voice <laughs> saying, you don't have much time. Keep it up. Don't fuck around. Keep focus. Yeah. And it works. <laughs> Oddly, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I have a question this is patty and um, thank you so much roberta i just i just loved listening to your talk um but the question i have is um can you hear me because my connection sometimes not yes i can okay. hear you good the question i have was regarding the obstacles um i i might have misunderstood so if i did um please please let me know but I thought I heard you say something like that uh, Lama told you that the obstacles were necessary. Is, is this right? Did, is that, is that yes. what you And can you say a little bit more about that? Or um, did, he, did he elaborate more or is it just something he, he just wanted you to reflect on? Or? 
Um, what do you think of that? <laughs> well, I think he meant that there's always doubts, even for the Buddha. There was the one of the last things before he died was um, to express doubt, is what Lama said. And um, it's a way for us to um, get off track, to it's to a way to doubt our abilities to achieve our um, our Buddha nature, which we all have. And um, so while we are studying the the Dharma and we have our um, practice and our um, training, those are only the one way that we can um, have an objective way to get to the truth, which is what we're all trying to get to. And in doing that, that's just one piece of it, but we have to actually be able to transform that objectivity into our subjective experience of the truth. And um, so when we have obstacles along the way, whether they be, you know, I'm not sitting for the next month or, you know, whatever it is that gets us off the track of these trainings and how we practice in our daily lives, then that creates doubt in our minds. I think that, well, look at this. I keep getting off track. I can't do it. Blah, 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 blah. I kind of like that. Maybe somebody else has a different idea. You know, when, when you started out by saying that, that venerable children had said that, you know, don't, don't accept everything I say, prove it to yourself, that that's really the only way to alleviate doubt is through, as you were saying, our subjective experience. We can get all this training and all this education, but if it's not... experience directly, then I wonder if there's a way of alleviating doubt without having experience. I think she was referring to both the objective and subjective experience. We have to test out the teachings that we learn from Lama and, and everybody else um, in our Dharma books. And we also have to experience those truths. So um, those are all things that we have to do for ourselves and nobody else can do for us. So it's really hard, even though he keeps saying that's easy. And um, so it's really easy to get discouraged and doubt yourself about it. I think, but you know, you guys tell me what you think. Well, this is Patty again. I, I just think, you know, um, it's just kind of our, to me, our doubts can kind of remind us of our common humanity in a way, you know, like, and then when we're maybe feeling a little stronger or more confident, if we can remember that those doubts, we can be a source of inspiration, like, yes, I, and people will really hear that we've been there too. And that humility and that we've been there too can, can help others keep going, I think. You know, I, that's what just occurred to me. That's my thought. <laughs> I agree with that. Hi, Roberta, it's Dana. Can you hear me? Hi, Dana. Hi. Hi. I agree with uh, Patty. It was really nice to <clears throat> see that you were on the list of teaching today and I know you're, you're <laughs> probably terrified <laughs> but at least it's uh online it's it's really nice um you can kind of experience this um you know one of the 
I have like many, many doubts, many challenges along the road. I, I can't believe I've been Lions Road for 12 years. And I remember when I um, was right Enjoy. before. I, yeah. <laughs> uh, 12 years. Yeah. I'm at the, the mark where I need to find another teacher. <laughs> right. <laughs> you need to say. <laughs> no, you don't necessarily have to have more than one. That was just my path. Yeah, that's true. Um, but I, I remember right before I took refuge, um, it was a, you know, I had, I had tons of doubts and Lama, you know, isn't one to chase people, certainly. But I remember, um, like, really unsure about taking refuge. And my story of taking refuge was, you know, uh, I think he told me to try it out for six months. I think that was his advice to me and Darshan. He's like, hey, what, what do you have to lose? Just try it out for six months or try it on. And if you don't like it, you can give it back. And I was like, what? And so that actually it was really reassuring. But now I know that's complete bullshit. Um, <laughs> you can't just try it on and and but give it back because once it sticks, it sticks. But um, I think that that sense of like, you know, dipping our toe into the water and trying to, you know, check it out for ourselves is really important. One of the most important teachings I think that Lama showed me and I'm sure he showed other people in his office, you know, he has that wooden board of the labyrinth where um, if you don't know what I'm talking about, there's a, you can Google images of, of labyrinth on your phone and, and something will come up, but um, looking at, you know, the path to, to anything, there's this winding road that you, you go through. And sometimes when you're the farthest away from the center, that's the, the, you're actually the closest to the end of the labyrinth. And, and uh, he made me trace my finger around this labyrinth. And it really kind of dawned on me that, you know, I was going through some really tough times. And, and uh, although the, the center seemed really far away, it was, you know, just around the corner, or at least, you know, I wasn't as far as I thought I was. Um, so I think that the taking the, the doubts as, as like, kind of indicators of, things that are challenging us are kind of maybe signs of good news that we're, we're actually, you know, still dipping our toe in the water. We're still present. We're still, we're still in the mix, even though things are, are pretty uh, uncertain. I, I think, I don't know. I think people's tendency is to go to the negative, but perhaps, you know, we can look at, you know, these, these signs as uh, important indicators of where we're at in the path um but um. i agree i would also say that um to your point of when you think you're the furthest away you might be the closest mm -hmm. you know when i reflect back on my whole time and then i also think about how we're changing from moment to moment to moment to moment we're never the same person and so um we can't possibly it has to be an ongoing process like this. And so of course it, it's not unusual that, you know, we would think that, oh, we're so far away. But when you look back, you're like, shoot, that's just where I was in my path. And it just continues and you grow and, you know, one step forward, two step back, and then it, it continues. Yeah. He, he always uses the symbolism of like going up the mountain, right? <clears throat> or like you know the light men at the and then most of us are maybe are in the cabin <laughs> <laughs> we're still drinking the hot chocolate that's for sure that's what he says yeah so but i i like the metaphor of even you know um if you're closest to the top you won't see the peak you won't you won't be able to know because you're the only way to see the peak is from the ground <laughs> mm -hmm. so <laughs> I think about that a lot because it's like, okay, how do how do we know where we're at in the path? And maybe we're, we just don't know, and we just keep going forward. Yeah. Well, you know, I I think we know because the llama kind of gives us a glimpse into where we're at. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say that's always been a question for me. Okay, well, if only I can experience this, but I don't really know what I'm doing, then how do I know when I get there, or what if I'm, you know, doing this right or whatever? And I think, yeah, that speaks to the importance of the teacher. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. 
with, with so many teachers. I wonder if you've ever, <clears throat> you've kept in touch with many of them, but I've had teachers where I just, you know, you're talking about Colorado where you had this kind of faith and belief. Um, and when that, that faith and belief is shaken and you don't know where to go after that, you're looking for other teachings. I find that that's like the hardest part of the journey is, you know, having kind of been disillusioned and, and then trying to still maintain your, your path, you know, as well as you know it without the teacher. That's to me, you know, the hardest to think about is not, not having a teacher and trying to find my own way. Um, I, th I think you're, you're really brave to have been moved around so many times and still found a teacher or found connections. I think that's incredible. Actually, it seemed to be another challenge. I'm retiring in Portugal, and there's there's a lot of Catholics there, but there's not a lot of Buddhists. So um, it will happen again. But um, I, I'm not worried if I if I've hung on this long, as pathetic as it may be or may not be, um, I feel confident that I'll, I'll stay on the path. So yeah. Well, then that, that's definitely a good opportunity to get Lama Jimpa to take a trip. <laughs> I know he's never been to Portugal. <laughs> well, thanks, Roberta. I really appreciate your talk. Thank you. Well, if there's no more questions, uh, we can carry on, or this is the uh, last call. I don't know if Connor maybe has some announcements for everybody. Okay. So if there's no more questions, we'll go ahead and uh, do dedication and get on with it. Due to the merits of these virtuous actions, may I quickly attain the state of a guru Buddha and lead all living beings without exception to that enlightened state. May the supreme jewel bodhicitta that has not arisen arise and grow and may that which has arisen not diminish, but increase more and more. In the land encircled by snow mountains, you are the source of all happiness and good. All powerful, Chen Rezi, Tenzin Gyatso, please remain until samsara ends. May the teachings of the Buddha flourish, and may the upholders of the teachings remain forever. May all migrators achieve happiness and may they fulfill the temporary and ultimate goals. Low song, magical display of the deep awareness of all the victorious ones. Merciful giver of a stream of profound and vast instructions to the fortunate migrators. Please remain always unperishing, unchanging, unfading. Avalokiteshvara, great treasure of objects, compassion. Manzushri, master of flawless wisdom. Vajrapani, destroyer of the entire host of Mars. Sankapa, crown jewel of the snowy land sages. Lusangdrapa, I make request at your holy feet. In the verses that save Sakya from sickness, a prayer for pacifying fear of disease. May all the diseases that disturb the minds of sentient beings and which result from karma and temporary conditions such as the harms of spirits, illness, and the elements, never occur throughout the realms of this world. May whatever sufferings arise due to life-threatening diseases, which, like a butcher leading an animal to the slaughter, separate the body from the mind in a mere instant, never occur throughout the realms of this world. May all embodied beings remain unharmed by acute, chronic, and infectious diseases, 
the mere names of which can inspire the same terror as would be felt in the jaws of Yama, the Lord of Death. May the 80,000 classes of harmful instructors, the 360 evil spirits that harm without warning, the 404 types of disease and so forth, never cause harm to any embodied being. May whatever sufferings arise due to disturbances in the four elements of depriving the body and mind of every pleasure be totally pacified, and may the body and mind have radiance and power and be endowed with a long life, good health, and well-being. By the compassion of the gurus and the three jewels, the power of the Dakinis, Dharma protectors and guardians, and by the strength of the infallibility of karma and its results, may these many dedications and prayers be fulfilled as soon as they are made. So, Honor has a few announcements, but I have to make Roberta go away. So how about Roberta says goodbye before I can actually give those effectively. Goodbye. Bye, Roberta. Thank you for sharing yourself and your path. It was good to hear from you. Welcome. Thank you. Okay, so a couple announcements. Um, Kangshan Rinpoche uh, has been doing some really cool things. Um, his most recent talks, he's been offering people if they want to send. Um, comments or homework questions to him. What we're going to do is we're going to batch those and send them to him as one uh, document. So if you have those and you want to participate in that, please send those questions to info at lionsroradharmacenter.org or to my personal email address if you have that. Um, the second thing is that we have an addition for uh, New Year's Day. Uh, we're going to do the uh, King of Prayer Samatra Bhadra from 10 to 6. And then at 7 p.m., um, Kangshan Rinpoche is also going to do another um, New Year's purification practice with us, which is really cool. What else? Um, I, I keep forgetting. I'm really sorry to send out this flyer about um, a, a drive for clothing and hats and mittens and scarves and stuff for the homeless that's part of the um, Sacramento uh, Council for... I don't know, it's basically a group of a whole bunch of different churches and religious organizations here in Sacramento. Patty's on the board of it. Um, so I'm going to try to send that out tomorrow because um, there's a, the address where you can drop those things off. Um, they're still doing that drive. And I think that's all the announcements that I have. Other than Buddha Dharma study students, please do your papers and get them in. We've only had one, which is a little sad, but you know, I know the holidays are coming up, so people are busy. So hopefully we'll get a lot more. Um, is there anything else that people have for announcements? No? All right. Well, great. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. See you guys later. Okay. Oh, wait. Sorry. Did someone have an announcement? My volume wasn't on. No? Okay. <laughs> oh, wait. So you have an announcement? No, no, no. No, oh, just... Okay. Bye. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Thank you.